Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be planting some perennial uh, flowers uh, that will bloom pretty much all summer long. I'm really excited about these. These are a few varieties from the Southern Living Plant Collection. I got these in a couple weeks ago at the garden center, and before I had a chance to grab some for myself, uh, they disappeared really, really quickly. These are, I've got four different varieties of salvia here and a white uh, agapanthus uh, called Everwhite. And this is like a semi-dwarf agapanthus. It only gets maybe two feet in height. It blooms super, super early. A lot of agapanthus blooms much later in the summer. Uh, this one blooms super, super early and then will repeat bloom later. These make great cut flowers. If you're not familiar with agapanthus, they're just spectacular uh, plants in the landscape. Most of the time the foliage stays evergreen. Uh, there are agapanthus that are uh, very, very cold hardy and can grow up into zone six. and even some colder cultivars now. This one right here is actually zone eight to 11. I'm in 7B. I'm putting these on the west side of my house. It shouldn't be any problem whatsoever with them coming back. I'm more concerned uh, with my soil not draining as well. So I'm mixing in some pine bark uh, with these uh, to create some more drainage in my clay soil. That's the most important thing with these agapanthus. As long as they don't sit in water in the winter time, it'll definitely come back on the west side of my house over here, which retains a little more heat uh, in the afternoon love this plant. I mean, it's so vivid white. And these flower spikes last for a long, long time. They just keep, um, you know, adding new buds as time goes on. And another nice thing about them is they're self-cleaning. You'll see the old flowers. You won't ever see any old faded flowers on them. They just drop off, which is a really nice feature to agapanthus. So it doesn't, you know, some white flowers, you know, tend to hold on to them for a long time and they make the rest of what's on the plant unattractive. Not gonna happen on this uh, agapanthus. Okay, this is what I'm really, really, really super excited about are these four uh, salvias uh, that Southern Living Plant Collection has now. I love salvias, uh, they're hummingbird magnets. Uh, they thrive in the sun. You just don't have to do anything to them. They're self-cleaning. Usually I'll let them grow up a little bit in the summer. And if the blooms start to slow down a little bit, I'll just cut them in half and boom, like magic, they come right back out and they're in full flower within a couple weeks again. I'll fertilize all of these as I'm putting them in the ground here in the spring. And then especially the salvia, I'll probably readdress them again in the early summer and really just, you know, they'll just flower nonstop uh, with a little extra fertilizer like that. Uh, this variety right here is called Saucy Wine. And this thing has disappeared at the garden center twice already. I don't know how well you can see that, but it is just a really stunning, beautiful uh, wine color. And like I say, these things will never stop blooming all summer. The foliage is really nice on them. Again, midsummer, I'm gonna whack this thing in half. It had actually already come up one time and has been cut and is blooming again already. And they'll bloom April until frost, which is really, really nice. Uh, this variety right here is called Ember's Wish. It's almost a pink or coral bud, and then the flower opens uh, to a red color. It's almost, it's a two-tone uh, plant. And this one, Ember's Wish right here, and the uh, next one I'm gonna show you right here, this uh, Love and Wishes uh, Salvia. Uh, both of these, uh, some portion of buying these actually goes to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is kind of nice. This variety right here also has this two-tone uh, flower color on it. It's like a purple bud and then I guess you'd call this um, fuchsia or something like that, the flower itself. It, it, but it creates this, looks like two different color flowers on the same plant. But look how stunning this thing is. I don't even know how well this is going to show up, how many flowers are on this plant. And it will do this, it's um, April now and it'll do this until frost. Uh, this other one on the end, uh, black and blue salvia has always been my favorite uh, salvia. This one right here is called black and bloom and it's a much earlier flowering variety than black and blue, and then it still flowers until frost. And you can see this two-tone, uh, why it's called black and uh, bloom. It has really, really dark buds along the stems here, and it opens to that purple uh, flower right there. And like I said, these are hummingbirds and pollinator magnets, and I'm gonna plant a big cluster of them over here on the west side of my yard. So here they are all planted out. I put the agapanthus and the saucy wine uh, salvia in the front. They're going to stay a little bit smaller. This area along the front here, I need to put something uh, lower in, um, probably put something that stays evergreen uh, since these other things are going to die back. The agapanthus, the foliage on it will stay 
evergreen. Okay, so I'm very confident that the agapanthus and the uh, black and bloom salvia back there are going to be perennial in my yard. Uh, the other three salvias are actually zone nine perennials. And I actually, I'm in 7B, and most of the time, uh, pretty much all the salvias that I've put in my yard, even the zone nine uh, salvias will come back. This past winter probably would have done them in. The other areas I've been growing salvias in have become too shady. So um, I've abandoned those spaces and I'm trying this space on the west side of my house. I do not care if any of these salvias come back um, reliably because they're gonna put on a bigger show than almost any annual that I can put in my yard uh, this year. So it would be a bonus to have them come back, but there's pretty much nothing that I'm gonna put in my yard. It's gonna be uh, as showy as these will and uh, be as uh, fun for the pollen, you know, ha to have pollinators and, and uh, have hummingbirds all over these all summer long. So thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for future videos.